Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to share with you safe and secure, safe and secure. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. But let's read the New King James Version and see what that one says. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, said the Lord. And I want you to know that, see, the Lord he, he, he would, he, as he would describe a person, uh, you know, describing the peace, righteousness, and glory of the restored remnant in the future. And, 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 you know, if you go to John, he uses a similar imagery G in describing the conditions of the new Jerusalem, Revelations 21, 10 and 18 through 21. But these words bring comfort to believers who are experiencing great affliction or adversity. Mm. When we are weighed down by trials and shaken by the tempest of life circumstances, we must remember that these are the very conditions that cause our Lord to have compassion on us and to draw near to us so that we may be spiritually strengthened. And if we go to verse 13 in Isaiah 54, and it says right here, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. But you know, let's go on to 14. And it says, In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Let me tell you something. You are safe and secure in the arms of the Lord. You are safe and secure in the presence of the Lord. You must believe that that's what you are. See, it is the will of God for his children to be secure and not to live in fear. We don't have to live in fear. Although we're in a world that creates a lot of fear and wants to create these traumatic imageries day in and day out, but we don't have to live in fear when we are the children of the Most High. See, we were created to feel safe. We were created to feel safe. It's supposed to be normal to feel safe. And sometimes it starts to feel abnormal in a world that God created. But we were created to feel safe, secure, secure and confident and bold. That's how we were created. But the world wants us to think that it's not common anymore. And that is not normal to feel these things, to feel safe and secure and to want to be safe and secure. They want to tell us that you can't believe that you're safe and secure in this evil world. You can't believe that you're safe and secure with all the killings that's going on. But how many times did the robber pass your house? How many times did the storm blow over and miss your house? How many times did were you driving on the uh, freeway or on a road and the car missed you, but it hit something else or another vehicle or it crashed along the side of the road when you came and passed by and you saw it on the side of the road. And God spared not only your life, but he spared others' life. How many times did the crime that was committed pass you by or the train you was riding on? got you safely to your destination or the plane landed safely. See, we were created to feel safe, secure, and confident in the Lord that he's going to protect us and that he's going to spare us and he's going to have mercy on us and that he is the protector of ourselves. And we have to be bold in knowing that God loves us, bold and knowing that we're secure and confident and safe in his arms. See, it's part of our spiritual DNA. I didn't say religious 
DNA or religion, religion DNA. I didn't say physical DNA and our own beliefs DNA and our own thought process DNA and, and what we believe DNA and by our own strength DNA. I didn't say any of that. I said it's part of our spiritual DNA as born again believers in Christ Jesus. And if you are a born believer, again, believer, excuse me, if you are a born again believer in Christ Jesus, you have to be bold about what you believe about Christ. You have to be bold in what you believe about what he can do for you. But the key to living a secure life is knowing who you are in Christ, really receiving God's love for you. No one can take away God's love that he has for you. Now, there are people out there that can tell you that people don't love you. People hate you. I don't love you. I hate you. And some people have even went as far as to say that God don't love you. But that is far from the truth. That is a naked lie and the truth is not in them because God loves you and no one can take away the love that God has for you. He just, they just can't do it because God is a mighty and awesome God and he chooses to love you when he died on that cross. But before dying, before he was beat and, and, and whipped and beating and you know, all those things that happened to him, he gave, he made that choice. Because he had so much love for you and for me and for us. He made the choice to take that beating. He made that choice. He made the choice. Because he loves us so much. He loves us so much. And no one can take God's love from us. And basing your worth and value on God says who you are, not what you do. So you have to base your worth and value on God because God is the one that gives us value. He's the one that gives us worth and restores us to who we are when we have fallen down and fallen short and fallen away. He restores us. He restores us and he realized that we're not perfect, but he loves us so much. He loves us so much and even in spite of ourselves, he loves us. But don't get it twisted. He hates the sin. He doesn't condone sin, but he still loves us so much. So you don't have to get it twisted today to know that God loves you. And that's why I always encourage you to study the word for yourself. Because sometimes people just want to hear the goodness of the Lord and they only want to hear the goodness of his word without realizing there's consequences for sin. But you don't need to base your worth and value on who God says you are. Excuse me. You don't have to base your worth and value on, on what you do. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't want to get it twisted myself. Um, you base your worth and value on who God says you are, not what you do. And let me say that again. Basing your worth and value on who God says you are, not what you do. So you don't want to base your value on the things that you do or on what other people say that you do. But you base your value and worth on who God says you are. Because see, according to Isaiah 54, 17, part of our inheritance from God is security. And we have to believe that we are secure in Christ. We can be safe and secure in the knowledge that God loves us for us is unconditional and unceasing. He loves us. It's unconditional. It's unceasing that he loves us so much. And no one can take away God's love, nor can they take away the unceasing love that he has for us. And that is unconditional. See, man and woman will place conditions on their love for you. Even children will do it when they've taught things of value and they've taught worldly stuff and they don't teach. They haven't been taught about Christ and who he is and what it means. Even children will place value on their relationship with you. Even children will value you 
and see your worth as how much you can give them, how much you can spend on them. Children have done that. I've seen it. Because when children are not taught about Christ and his word, and they're not taught about the real, true, living God, our Savior, the Most High, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Allah, whoever you call it, the Redeemer, the Jehovah Jireh, whoever and however, when you have not taught children about Christ and his word, children will place conditions on what they value, on who they value, and the, wor and the worth of people. And they think that what you do for them is how much you love them. And they sometimes build relationships on that. But God doesn't see us that way. He doesn't see us like that at all. God does not place conditions on his love for us. He doesn't place ceasing conditions. They're always unceasing. And he values us for who we are, who he says we are, not what we do. That's a big difference. It's a big difference. Because we can do things all day long and every day and wear ourselves out. Drive ourselves crazy, mentally, physically, to exhaustion, and even to death. Driving ourselves. And it still won't make God love us anymore. Because he doesn't place a value on our worth like that in what we do. He doesn't place a value on that, on what we do. He places a value on who he sees us as. So no one can take that from you. And if you know what you know that you know, that God loves you and he loves you for who he sees you as, don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the haters. Just don't worry about them. Ignore them. Ignore the distractions because we can be safe and secure in that knowledge that God loves us for us. Always remember that you are more than your job. And see, they may place value on you on your job. Place that value of who you are and what you're not and what you're doing and what you don't do for each other and what they expect you to do for them. Because they have it misplaced. And if you're in a leadership or, you know, management, some, you know, th people do that. They, they think you owe them something. And, and they try to place conditions upon you and value you for what you do for them. That's selfish. It's selfish. And they place conditions. And God doesn't do that. They will even look at you and try to value on your level of education. Oh, they don't have nothing but a certificate or, you know, or associate degree or, you know, or even a bachelor's or undergrad degree or, you know. And some people compete with one another on who could get the most degrees and the highest degrees. But let me tell you something. If you have a degree in life that you haven't given up, see, that's the thing. You have a degree in life and you haven't given up. You might have felt like you wanted to give up. You might have fell down and made some mistakes along the way. Who hasn't? You might have cried your way through some breakthroughs and trials and tribulations. But guess what? You have a degree in life and never given up. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It's about your relationship with Christ and who he says you are and a degree in never giving up the faith and always drawing near to Christ and always building on your relationship with Christ. That's the type of degree that we all should be, should be striving for is having that relationship, that degree with Christ. 
drawing near to him and being close to him and knowing who he says we are, what he thinks about us. That's the degree that we can have in life, knowing that we've never given up and never wavered. We might have wanted to, and it might have been hard at times or many times, but we didn't leave Christ. And we didn't forget about Christ because we know that he is the savior and we know that he can do exceedingly and abundantly. So always remember that you are more than your job, more than your education level, or even your talents and abilities. And we know there's some very talented people in the world. We know that there's people with abilities, but you know what? You're more than that because with your job, your education level, your talents and abilities, and I'll even throw in your monetary worth or your financial worth. Guess what? All of that stuff can perish. It's not going to matter when you get to heaven. It won't matter. So you're more than all of that. Because without any of, without God, you're nothing anyway. It doesn't matter about those talents and abilities that you have doesn't matter about your education level and your job if you don't have God. Because you should remember that without God, you wouldn't have those things. Because God is the one that blesses us with those things. He's the one that gives them to us. So always remember you're more than what you do. You're more than your job and education level and talents and abilities and your monetary worth or financial worth. Remember those things. See, you are God's very own. And you have to remember that you are God's very own. If you are born, a born-again believer, you are God's very own. You belong to him. You've heard that song, I belong to Christ. I belong to Christ. That song, you belong to him. And he loves you unconditionally. You really can have a life of peace joy and true security because God is on your side. See, if God is for you, who can be against you? God is on your side. Don't ever think that God is not on your side. Even when you're going through trials and tribulations, God is on your side. He's always on your side. See, God doesn't leave us. A lot of times people leave God. God doesn't walk away from us. People walk away from God. See, don't leave God because God won't leave you. Don't walk away or run away from God because he won't walk and run away from you. He wants a relationship with you. He desires to sup with you and fellowship with you and have that true divine relationship with you. He wants a genuine honest relationship with you. He's looking for a few good men and women and even children that he can love on, that he can sup with, that he can talk to daily. He wants to love you like no other. Will you accept God's love? Will you accept the security that God has for you? Believe me, it's more than money. It's more than a job. It's more than an education level. It's more than abilities and talents. It's more than anything the world can offer. Because see, when you believe in God, excuse me y'all, when you believe in God, guess what? Everything else will fall in place anyway. Everything will fall in place Anyway, when you trust God for who he is and today's thought is in your quiet time with God today, take a few moments to focus on the wonderful truth that God loves you. His love is perfect and is a free gift. You don't, it's a free gift. You don't have to go out and buy it from somebody and go to the store or order it online. It's a free gift. And if you want to dig deeper into God's word, study Proverbs 18, 10 and Proverbs 30. Five. God bless you all on today. And I hope that you share, like, and subscribe to this video. Peace.